Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. It is Thursday. That means we'll be getting your weekly jobless claims today. Hopefully, we're starting to see that edge down some. It's still pretty serious. So hopefully, it won't be as bad as what we saw even just a few weeks ago. Fingers crossed that we get a weekly claims number at least under 2 million. Boy, that would make me feel a lot better. Can't believe the 2 million seems like a good number. God, have times changed. Anyway, this is the program that is trying to walk you through this virus, this pandemic, and the financial fallout associated with it. If you've got a financial question, please just send us an email, askjill at jillonmoney.com. That's askjill at jillonmoney.com. You can always get to us from our website, jillonmoney.com as well. All right. Joe writes, I absolutely love your podcast, especially in these crazy times. I'm 26 years old. I have a full six months emergency fund. I make $66,000 a year. I max out my Roth IRA every year, and I'm currently contributing 13% to my Roth 401k. Should I be putting a percentage of those 401k contributions into a traditional 401k? I already have some money in the traditional from a few years back, but should I put more in it? I'm thinking 7% Roth, 6% traditional. Your thoughts? Thank you so much for keeping up with the daily episodes. It's been awesome. Well, Joe, I think, no, I think all Roth all the time. I think that you're going to be really happy you did. I think tax rates are probably going up. And my guess is that at 26, your income is also going to rise. So I'd rather prepay my taxes and get it going really think this is a fantastic level of savings you're doing. So congratulations on that. Okay, Kevin writes, with interest rates on savings accounts down, would you recommend putting money into a Ginny May fund or a short-term treasury fund? I'm looking for a relatively low-risk place to put some money while still earning interest. Uh, you know, I don't think either. I would just probably look for a uh, a higher yield Money market account. Go to depositaccounts.com. And there I think you'll be able to find at least a little bit better than what you're getting in a plain old savings account and uh, see what you can find. I'm not sure like the Ginny May, I don't think it's going to be that much better. Treasuries are still paying kind of crap. So I don't think you're going to do much better with that. And frankly, uh, it may just be easier to see if you can get a better yielding product by going online. So check out depositaccounts.com. Okay, Deborah writes, I'm 60 years old and considering retiring at the end of this year. I make $95,000, own my home, and have no debt. I max out my 401k and Roth IRA. The 401k has $1.1 million, the Roth $200,000, and I have a pension. Oh, I'm going to tell you, Deborah, you sound like you're in great shape. I have the option of taking a lump sum of $466,000 or an annuity of $2,300 a month. I think I can live comfortably on $50,000 a year. I'm leaning towards the annuity. What do you think? FYI, I'm in good health. My mother is 95. Wow. Okay. Well, look, you're in great shape. I think this is a good combination. You take the $2,300 a month and you still have $1.3 million that is out there, you know, having a pension of $2,300 a month, what's the downside? Is that the company goes broke and somehow you don't get the whole pension? Presuming you work at a place that kind of stands up behind its pension obligations and is well-funded, I think that's a pretty good deal. You get your $2,300 pension, you get your money that you've saved, and you got pretty low levels of need. I think I like the annuity. That's good. And once you get the Social Security, you're probably going to barely have to dip into any of that savings. That's a good deal. I'd say go for it, Deborah. Good plan. Okay. Uh, Jill in New Jersey says, uh, thanks so much for the daily updates. They go well with my coffee every morning and I'm learning so much. We've got two grandchildren, age 18 and 19. The 18-year-old will be starting college in the fall. The 19-year-old will be starting after two years in Israel. We'd like to give them a nice amount of money, not in cash, but in some kind of investment. We're both retired, though I'm working part-time and contribute to a Roth IRA. We are considering giving each of them a Roth IRA. Is this possible since they do not have earned income? If it is not possible, what kind of investment vehicle would you suggest in this situation? 
thank you so much for being there for us financial novices. I feel so much better after listening to you. Jill in New Jersey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't do a Roth IRA anyway. I think what would be cool would be for you to basically start them on the road to investing by explaining to them what you're doing and maybe have them involved and say to them, well, you know, we are putting aside some money for you in this account, in this, let's call it a Vanguard T-Row Price Fidelity. We're going to put, I don't know how much money you're thinking, but let's just pretend it's $2,000 each. We're going to put half of it in a stock index fund and half of it in a bond index fund. And then we're going to help you every year learn how to manage this. And I think what's great about that is that you want them involved. And also you want them to know that this is money that they could use to perhaps do something different in the future. Maybe they can afford to live on their own. This money could be invested wisely and that could help. Maybe this would allow them to start a business. Maybe that's something they want to do, but that you use it as a as a savings tool, but also as a means to help educate them because in many respects, what you're giving them is more than just this money. You're giving them the opportunity to learn how to manage that money. So because they have no earned income, you can't just put money in a Roth. They've got to earn some money. So maybe you would even consider a Roth if they got jobs in the summer next year or something. But for now, it's a nice way to get them started. Okay. This may be my favorite email of the week. This is from Nancy who writes, I love your show. I'm always learning something. My question is about having a will. What financial implications are there for not having a will when you die? My brother is 70, financially secure, owns his own home and car, has a pension and several investments. He says all his investments and financial products have beneficiaries, so he doesn't feel the need to get a will. I disagree. I'm afraid I'm going to have a mess down the line should he die before me. What can I tell him to convince him to get a will? Thank you. Let me answer the question and I'm going to tell you why this made me smile. He's wrong because there's a couple of things. Yes, his financial products and investments may pass by contract, but even if he just has a bank account, It's still a probated asset. So if he has anything that is in his name that is not in a trust and doesn't pass by contract, it has to be probated. So that's number one. Someone has to do that, and that's going to be a hot mess for you. You know what else is a hot mess? What are his end-of-life intentions? Does he have a power of attorney, and does he have a health care proxy that might contain a living will? That is really important. And why is he so reluctant to get a will? If he's so sure that everything's just fine and dandy, the will is a super easy thing to do. It might just be that for his stuff, like his stuff has to be probated. Someone has to get his stuff. The will doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to avoid paying taxes if you have a you know more than $11 million, but a will just means that you have a process for distributing your assets in the way that you see fit. And of course, these other documents. Okay. Here's what you can tell him to convince him. Say, you know what? I love you. And I really would prefer mourning your death than sitting in a lawyer's office dealing with this mess. So could you please just do this? If not for you, just do it for me. And if that guilt doesn't work, then uh, let's get him on the phone with me. I'd love to hear his reasoning. The reason why this made me smile is not because of the will talk, although I do love that. Nancy says, I heard you talk about the girls. Here's my guy, Finn a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, a gorgeous. This Corgi has eyes like you cannot believe. I am delighted. Thank you. Uh, Send me pictures of your dogs. I love that. Finn, welcome to the Jill on Money family. Nancy, thank you so much for writing. All of you, thank you so much for listening. If you want to send me a picture of your cute dogs, even if they're not so cute, they're yours, so they're cute. Send it to us. Email askjill at jillonmoney.com. Don't forget to hop onto the website when you get a shot. That's where you can get our free weekly newsletter. It's called Jill on Money. And there is tons of stuff that is on the website. There are articles. There are clips of 
TV appearances. You can start counting how many times I wear the same outfit, you know, things like that. It's kind of fun. And most importantly, please, if you don't subscribe already, please do subscribe to this podcast. You can find it anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. If your friends want to subscribe, they can go to Apple or Stitcher or Radio.com or Google Play, you know, wherever. Just get them going. Get these people say, don't ask me these questions. Ask Jill those questions. So easy to do. All right. Now, we are wrapping up the show. And you know what I always say? I say, wash your hands, wear your mask, maintain your social distancing, and please do try to do something nice for somebody. Someone around you needs something. And it may be as easy as just a quick phone call, a text. It doesn't matter. Reach out, do something nice. To me, this is something that can really start to pay great, great dividends in the long run. It'll make you feel better. It will make someone else feel better. So lift someone up today. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.